This one will go extremely high. It can shoot almost in the dark. But this is, you know, we're good, Sifa? Yeah, ready to start? Okay, all right. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming here. Joining me, I am Neil Chalaya, pastor of the Living Water Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I'm here to talk about media ministry in the church plant. Now, for those of you who are already um, here for our earlier session, the big question was, you know, why are we talking about media ministry in a church plant with all the things that a church planter has to work through, the core team, the launch plans, the recruiting, the sending, the empowering, and all these different things. Why media ministry? And it's because Jesus met the people where they were, right? He didn't invite them to come in a place that was unusual, uncomfortable, or whatever. He met the people where they were, and he spoke a language that they understood. And that's what media ministry is all about. We mentioned earlier the fastest growing language around the world, the one universal language that is spoken, whether it's from the west to the east and anywhere in between, is media. Most people spend their time in front of their phones, their tablets, their computers, what have you. And what are they doing? They're on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. They're going to different sites, whatever. Look at the, the huge growth of streaming services like Netflix and Amazon. And the explosion, even in the movie chains, multi-billion dollar films. Why? Because there's something about media that speaks to this generation. And so for a church plant to be able to connect with the people, to connect them with Jesus, we got to meet them where they are, speak in a language they understand, which is what media ministry is all about. So we're going to focus on a couple things specifically about media ministry in church plants. And I'm going to tell you this right now. This is going to be a practical class. This is not so much a, a theoretical class. I'm going to take any questions and all kinds of stuff. But I want you to have hands-on time with a package and a process that we have designed that we believe is cost-effective and easy to implement at any church plant, regardless of your size. Because this solution can scope large or it can scope small. So I had an opportunity to meet with a number of church planters and church plants before we launched our plant um, earlier in, uh, in January of this year. And I saw some of the challenges that they had or they thought they would have with launching a media ministry in their plant. And so Living Water set out to find a way to overcome those and lower the barriers of entry to media ministry to impact their local communities and tangentially people all over the world because that's where the internet reaches. Um, for those of you watching online, uh, some of the statistics, we launched our church in January of this year, 2019, um, without any campaigning to reach out and promote our, our worship services or anything, live streaming to YouTube and Facebook, we have reached over 5,000 views in nine months. We have over 60 YouTube subscribers, and they are not church members. And we average about 50 to 70 in-church attendees but we average 30 live viewers every week as well. So like 50% of our in-church attendees we have online. And I mentioned also our very first baptism was an online-only church member. Media ministry works, and it needs to work in our church, our church plants today. Because if our church plants can do this, if each of us, was to go out there and plant a church and to reach our community in the language that they understand. We're talking about the gift of tongues now, folks. Right? You ever wonder why is it of all the gifts of the Spirit, why did he lead out with the gift of tongues? 
Because I used to wonder that because, you know, Paul says, you know, pray for the good gifts, pray for the big gifts, right? But he led out with the gift of tongues. Why? Because they needed to share the gospel in a language the people understood. But today, I don't need to know how to speak Spanish or French or Italian or Mandarin or Hindi because there's translators for me. But if I could speak the gift of media, now I can touch people all over the world, right where they are. So what are some of the challenges of media ministry and church plants? We'll take a look on the screen over there. Number one, money. That was the number one reason church plant pastors and small church pastors told me that they don't stream or they just have, you know, their phone running, YouTube, and it's, it's hard to watch. They say, it's expensive. We don't have enough funds. Number two, church plants are usually in a rented location. We meet at a Lutheran church that has no AV whatsoever. We love this church, they're wonderful, but their AV system is about 50 years old and it was purchased from Radio Shack. I kid you not, it says Radio Shack on it. And um, unfortunately, you know, our service is a little bit more contemporary um, and we blew out their speaker system. So <laughs> we had to bring in every week all our own AV stuff, set it up, break it down, store it away. No one wants to take this stuff home. So rented locations, you need something that can be set up and broken down every week easily, and you need something that can be stored. Like if you look in the back there, Bellsville is blessed with a wonderful AV booth. They've got multiple cameras, monitors, and all kinds of stuff over there. And a lot of people think that's what you need to do media ministry. And I'm here to tell you that's not the case. Not anymore. Storage, lack of storage space, needs to be portable. Church plants often move from location to location as well, right? You can't set up shop in one place and think you're going to be there long term. Church plants often have to move. It needs to be portable. One of the things, even in our church, the Lutheran church that we rent, our, our baptistry, the Lutheran church doesn't have a baptistry, so we have a portable tank that we have outside in the courtyard where we do our baptisms. Well, if you leave the sanctuary, how are they going to follow your stream unless your streaming system is portable and you can carry it right outside with you? And finally, volunteers. Church plants are typically short-staffed with a few volunteers that are inexperienced, and people think they need to have experienced AV team members and a number of them to run a media ministry. These are the top four challenges that came to me as I talked to pastors and church planters. That's where this solution that I'm proposing to you today comes in. This is called a Sling Studio Hub, this small little box here, a Sling Studio Hub. So what is a Sling Studio? Well, money, it is cost effective. That hub here, which everything can connect to wirelessly, costs only $1,000. And you do not need to add additional hubs. If you want to expand to five, ten different cameras, let's say some kind of wild worship service, you only need one hub. You don't have to buy any dish. In other words, it scales out. You buy it one time. Cost effective, it is professional. You can have an iPod, which is $200. You can have a professional video camera that's $5,000. They will all connect to this the same way. And it's easy to set up. It's location. It's portable. It's wireless. And it's easy to set up. You're looking over here. There are multiple cameras. They're running wires up the, up the roofs and going down here along the baseline or whatever. Most streaming systems all have wires running from the cameras into a computer, a server, or something. Everything is done wirelessly on this Sling Studio, which you're going to see in a moment. Storage, as you can see, this thing can fit in a small backpack. It needs no storage space. The wireless adapters can fit in your pocket. They are so small and convenient. So there is no storage limitations. Volunteers, 
I mentioned to you earlier, we have seven-year-olds who are being trained to run our AV. Why? Because it's all run on an iPad. It's all touchscreen. Okay, let's take a look over here. And you guys are going to get a chance to run this show yourself. So, okay, and you can see it right here on the screen, right here. So, I got this nice shot of the, these four folks right over here. I want to take a look at them. Okay, that's my preview over there. We want to go live, swipe it down, and boom, they're live now. They're streaming. Oh, but, you know, maybe I want to cut away to one of our, our presentation slides here. So, I'm going to take over here. Okay, this is coming from our presentation laptop. Just slip that over there. Okay, that looks good. Yep, I want to go live. Oh, let's swipe that down. And there, that's live streaming now. You can connect your presentation laptop. You can connect your cameras. You can connect iPods, iPhones. Whatever has an HDMI video connection can be wirelessly transmitted to your live stream. And all it takes is one of these pocket-sized wireless devices. Sling Studio. Listen, I've been doing AV for probably 25 years or so. And um, prior to being a pastor, I was an IT director. And I still had to do some AV kind of stuff when I was an IT director. Prior to that, I was a filmmaker for a couple of years. And there are a thousand ways to do live streaming, all with their pros and cons. This solution was the best, easiest, most cost-effective solution that I could find for a church planter. And let me tell you, it was so successful at our church, a large local church that has over 500, 600 attendees swiped, swapped out their streaming system and installed this because of its ease of use and its simplicity. So this is not something like, oh, we're just having some small, cheap system because, you know, church planters don't have any money. No, let me tell you, this is, I believe, the best system good money can buy, except it doesn't cost much. So that's Sling Studio. That's at the heart of what we're talking about here. Now, before we go into the live streaming packages, so what I wanted to do is this, because... I've been in classes where it's a lot of theory. We talk about a lot of different things, you know. Uh, but, but in the end, you want to know, but, but how do I actually do this? How do I make that happen? And, and while there could be cheaper solutions out there, I want to give you the highest value solution, one that will carry and follow with you no matter how many years you're running this church. And that is this recommended base equipment. This Sling Studio Hub here costs one thousand dollars an ipad if you don't already have one you can just get a base model ipad costs about three hundred dollars these days this is going to be your user interface for your seven-year-olds to run a camcorder if you don't already have a camcorder now i honestly didn't want to bring this big camcorder because i don't want you to think that oh you need to have these giant cameras that's not the case at all you can go to Best Buy, and I actually have, before you leave, actually, I have handouts with specific models, prices, and locations where you can buy them. So if you're interested, you don't, it takes the guesswork out of it. But for about $500 or less, you can get a high-quality camera to serve as your primary streamer. Now, I recommend you start with at least two video sources. And the Sling Studio can take an iPod Touch or an iPhone wirelessly and be a source over here. In fact, if you look at the screen right over here, this third source here, that's just coming straight from an iPod Touch. So let's say you wanted to have a third, a fourth camera. Maybe you wanted to have a camera that's just looking at the audience over here for, for audience shots or whatever. But you don't have the money to buy another camera or whatever. You might have some of the audience say, hey, can we just, you know, let's just pop up your iPhone here for this service. Boom, you've got another video source. So this, this is not necessarily what you have to pay if you already have some of these things. Cables and storage, talking about SD cards, HDMI cables and things like that, $25. A base equipment package of $2,000 that never needs to be replaced. In other words, as you grow, you're just adding to it. It doesn't need to be replaced. Now, I want you guys 
to actually come and check out how easy this is. So I need a volunteer. Anybody want to volunteer? Who wants to be my video mixer? Who wants to be my video mixer? Come on up. Come on up. Round of applause for the gentleman over here. Tell us your name. Dimitri, come on up here, Dimitri. Now, you guys can look on the screen over here. So, Dimitri, here you go. This is your user interface. Everything is run off an iPad, right? All, across down here are all your video sources, and you can label them. We've got one that's just an HDMI in. This is the presentation, which you see streaming from that laptop over there. And you have an iPod Touch also wirelessly connecting to it. If you had other sources, they would go right below it. And Dimitri, just go ahead and, oh, let's say you want to switch to, let's say you want to switch this preview to that iPod Touch. So just take your finger and drag it to the preview. Now Dimitri can see, okay, this is what this source looks like. Okay, that looks cool. I want the audience to see this live. Now Dimitri, just slide that down here to program. Now, whatever is down here is what your streaming audience sees. Whatever here is basically your prep zone. You can take a look and say, okay, you know, uh, that looks good. Let's send it to the live audience. This is your staging zone. This is so you can see in a much bigger window what you see in smaller windows over here. And this down here is what is live. Now, Dimitri, let's go back to this close-up over here. Let's take them to preview. All right. Now, you can also add graphics. Let's say you want to add something that says, you know, um, Jean, pastor of, you know, Rockville Korean Church or Rockville Chinese Church. So click over here where it says graphics, right over here. And you can have pre-done graphics. So we have, obviously, for our church setup. See the second one over here? Send that to preview. Or just click on it. There you go. So that's in your preview. That looks good. Okay, let's send that to the live. So just swipe that down, the whole thing. Oh. Uh-oh. And of course, when you go live, there's technical difficulties. <laughs> there you go. So you can see, you can easily take graphics superimpose them onto your video sources for titles, scriptures, whatever you want, stage it, prepare it over here, and then send it to your live audience when ready. Dimitri, how hard was that? Very easy. Very easy, right? You, you, did you need a lot of training? No. no you, you, are, are you an AV expert? <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, give Dimitri a hand. Give Dimitri a round of applause. Thank you, Dimitri. Listen, folks, anybody who wants to come up here, it's here for you. I want you to come and check this out, even as, we're, even as we continue in the presentation. In other words, John, you got a big smile on your face. You can come up here and just play with this thing because I want all of you to experience just how easy live streaming is. All right? Sherry. Great question. So, yes, we do, but it's not on this. You guys use ProPresenter here at Beltsville. We use Faith Life's Proclaim, but it's all presentation software, right? Whatever presentation software you prefer, and, and we, we went with Proclaim because it's, it's easier to use. It's not as powerful as ProPresenter and Media Show, some of these other ones, but it's easier to use so that our seven-year-olds can run it. We set up all the slides. So over here, let's go back actually to the video sources here. So what you see here, this welcome message, this is coming from our presentation laptop, which has our presentation software running. And because it is now wirelessly connected to our video streamer, all they have to do is take that slide and take it live. So whenever someone in your local church sees the scripture, sees a slide or whatever, the video mixer sees it on his panel too and just swipes it in. No additional work is needed. Your church prepares your presentation for your local service. The video streamer just takes advantage of what you've already done. No duplication. No duplication. Any other questions before we move on? So I'm sorry, in, um, 
can you go over that? Uh, I think you have to go over it. I, if, if I didn't, I think I missed it. So when, so when we are preparing the speech, and with the speech we have slides that are going to be coming up, right? Yep. We do that in the laptop. Yep, you're going to have some kind of, whether it's a laptop, desktop, something, but whatever you prepare your slides on okay. for your local church, let's say, like for us, we use a laptop. Right. And if you're a church plant, you're probably using a so laptop. So we just hook up the laptop wirelessly. You're going to connect this. Oh, connect it. Okay. This is a wireless device. Okay. You're going to connect this. So this is called a camera link. This is a Sling Studio camera link. And a lot of the wires you see here right now are just power wires because we're going to be here for so long, I didn't want the power to run out. But if I unplug them, because this is, runs on battery as well. So that green light, it's a built-in battery. I could unplug all of this, and it'll still work. Okay. So you would run this into the HDMI into your laptop. Mm -hmm. And whatever you're presenting in the church will now show up on the iPad as well. Okay. So you have to prepare your slide presentation for the church anyway, right? Right, right. You're not doing anything extra for the live stream. Right, okay. It's just sending it to the stream now. Yeah, okay. So let me tell you how the setup a little bit over here is now. So you've got your Sling Studio hub over here. There is one HDMI, a video input, into the back of here. Take advantage of it. You know, each one of these wireless modules costs about $300 or so. So for your first camera, just run the HDMI straight into your camera. It'll be the only video cable you run in this entire system. And you don't have to if you don't want to. I'm just saying save $300 and do it, right? We're church planters. <laughs> we need to save all the money we can get. So you have one cable running into one camera. That's now appearing as one of your video sources here. I recommend a cheap and easy way to add a video source, get a $200 iPod Touch. You'll notice, obviously, the quality is not as good, the colors are not as good, the lighting and all that kind of stuff. But if you keep it near a pew, it'll give you a nice audience shot. If you keep it at the back of the church, because let's say this, so this, this is the, the, the most favorite, right? People start walking in front of the camera, right? And that looks really bad online, right? Give them a shot they can cut away from. So put that iPod touch in the back and let them see the sanctuary. But now let's say that um, you're a church plant. Remember, you're still a growing church. One of the beauties of live streaming is the audience only sees what you wanted to see. And you don't really want them to see an empty church. So tighten that shot in to those pews, that because every church has those pews with those people who always sit there, right? You can tighten that shot so it always looks like you have a full church over here. This is a happening place. I want to be there. They only see what you show them. You understand what I'm saying? You craft the vision, right? You craft the vision. So that iPod Touch runs wirelessly. That white cable, that's just for power. I could unplug it. It'll still be running. Your presentation laptop, I highly recommend. Everyone uses presentation. You know, if, and if you have questions about what kind of screens that, you know, projectors and screens and things like that, I have information for you on that kind of stuff too. Um, plug in one of these wireless links into the laptop and let your video mixer, your seven or eight year old, have the opportunity to slide those in. What a difference it makes from having just an iPhone over here with poor video and poor audio, and really nobody probably other than, you know, your mommy and daddy and, and you know, that want to watch this thing, to having this highly polished, produced, multi-camera, cost-effective system. It makes a world of a difference. Remember, you're keeping the unchurched audience in your mind. You have to lower the barriers of entry. You always go under the assumption that the devil is doing everything in his power to keep them from watching you online. And so our job is to reduce those barriers of entry. Make it quality. Let them enjoy watching this service. It doesn't cost a whole lot, and it's not hard to do. Yes, question. Is there a mic? Hold on one second. We just want to, we want to get you mic'd up. 
how do you connect what you are saying with the PA system of the church or the, the place that you're? That's a great question. So I'm glad I brought this thing over here. I wasn't sure if I was going to use it. Sifa, I'm coming back to the stage. <laughs> All right, so I mentioned to you that in the church that we are renting, it's quite an old church, and it is a traditional Lutheran worship service. So it's very low-key. Um, it's mostly kind of, you know, very traditional hymns slash chanting hymns. Um, really old speaker system, really old amp, everything says Radio Shack on it. And as a church planter, we wanted to use what was available until we broke it. So we had to find a audio system that was also portable. Storage is easy and easy to use. If you go back to Bellsville's rig back there, in most churches, you will see big panels with lots of sliders and lots of ports and all these things, and it takes a lot of space. And I've seen other church plants, they have this big cabinet thing, and they have to wheel this thing out. What I recommend to you is a digital mixer. It can easily store into this crate. In fact, it only takes about half of this crate, and it's light. So you just pack it up, put it away. It's got 16 inputs. No, it's got 20 inputs in here and eight outputs. So if you've got 16 instruments, mic singers, whatever, it's got, no, I'm sorry, 20 of them, it's got all of that for you. It's got a USB input that we use for pre-recorded music in between Sabbath school and our worship service so uh, they can easily play whatever before our pianist might be running late or whatever. It is high quality. Folks, we ran through four different types of brands and models of mixers before we settled on this. I can say that about everything that I'm sharing with you today. Folks, we tried so many different things with AV. We failed, 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 failed until we found something that worked, that we believe not just works for us, but will work for you as well. Portable, easy to use. So, so where's all the slides? Where's all the controls and everything? It's run off an iPad wirelessly. It has a hotspot built into it. You take your iPad, you connect to the hotspot of this mixer, and all your sliders, all your buttons, all your controls are all on that iPad. And here's the beauty of it, too, because if you run AV like me on traditional systems with sliders and things like that, someone comes in there and they adjust some knobs and slides and things like that, and you come in there and the, it, the, the place sounds like a mess. But since this is run off an iPad, you can make all your settings, perfect them, and save it. So if anyone readjusts or does whatever, no problem. Load template one. Boop, everything is back to normal. It's all run off an iPad. Easy to use, easy to store, cost effective. Uh, the model costs and things like this are also in the handouts, just in case you were in a similar situation. So we have this as our digital mixer. We have wireless mic systems that also fit. We have four and you can fit six in a crate just like this. So we have another crate that has a, a wireless mic, wireless mic, wireless mic, wireless mic. We have four wireless mics over there. Each one costs, each system, that means the mic and the receiver probably costs around $400. So you kind of have to figure out what you want to afford. They're cheaper ones. I would recommend getting something of a baseline quality. It's around $400 or so. And as you get more singers, presenters, whatever, and you need to add more mics, no problem. Put it in one of these empty slots. They'll all connect together, and they'll all plug into this thing. That's what we do for our mic system. So we blew out their speakers, right? The church had their own speakers, and we blew those out. They were kind enough to say, you know, Neil, we didn't even notice they were broken because we don't ever use them. Praise God. Because we offered to replace them. They said, don't worry about it. But we had to find our own speakers then. Also in the handout are speakers that I bought. Um, they are only 8-inch drivers, so they're pretty small. They're light. But they would have the sound to fill up more than this church. Just two of them. So we did pay a little bit more for the speakers because I paid more for portability and ease of use. I could have saved money and bought these giant speakers and where am I going to put them? So 
all of our AV equipment, this, all the stuff you see here, and this is only probably half of what we use, all fit in a crate that's probably about this high and maybe this wide. So we didn't have to ask the church for a storage closet or whatever. It's just a crate that we put every single piece of our equipment in, including a 120-inch rear projection screen with two projectors, one for overflow downstairs as well. So there are, bottom line is to say there are a lot of ways to cost-effectively implement high-quality media ministry in your church plant. It can scale as small as you want, and using that same equipment can scale as large as you're going to need without having to replace a thing. And it's so simple to use, a seven-year-old can run it. Any other questions before we move on? Where did I, where did I put that clicker? Nope, okay. So we talked about about $2,000 is the recommended package of equipment and components for live streaming that I recommend. Could you do something cheaper? You could, but you'd be cheating yourself. You know, people are like, oh, but you know, $300. Folks, in the long run, really, what's $300 when you're going to be using this thing for how many years? To add the presentation slides to the mix, you're going to need to add one of these Sling Studio camera links. This thing costs $350. Maybe add some power cables. You're looking at about another $200, I'm sorry, $20 or so. So you want to add those presentation slides, about another $380. Unless you want to run that directly into your box over here. Remember, there's one wired input. To add every additional camera, you will need one of these sling boxes, which is $350, and then any camera that you decide to buy. Now, the camera that you see listed here, or you know, a camera and cam camcorder and cables, $470. The reason that I selected the camera that's going to be in the handouts is because of low light performance. Human eyes see much better than a camera's eyes. For what seems like bright and light for us is dark and dim for a camera. You don't need to have, you know, 4K and all this kind of stuff. You need a camera that does well in the dark. Because a lot of the places that you're probably going to be worshiping and renting at is not going to have nice spotlight lighting like this. So you need a camera that's going to see you the way you want the audience to see you. And that's going to cost you around four or $500. Basic setup. So you got your church audio mixer, right? That's this. So you're running all your sound and your music and your band and all that stuff, your mics, your praise team. They're all coming into here. And you're going to run two, your audio out of this mixer into the front, or I'm sorry, into the back of this Sling Studio. It's a simple wire. XLR out, stereo in. That's it. Simple plug. You're going to have your primary camera, this one, run an HDMI cable into here. It's the only video cable you're going to use. The iPod Touch, it connects wirelessly to the hub. Just going to connect it to this hotspot. An iPad, which is your user interface, which we just had beautifully demonstrated by my brother over there, connects wirelessly as well. And anything that you have connected to this camera link, in other words, you have your presentation, you have a third camera, a fourth camera, whatever, just turn those links on. That's it. That's it. It's really just about plugging and powering on. It does the rest for you. So some notes on streaming, because there's a lot of different ways to stream, just like there's a lot of different packages here. You want to set up an either 1080p or 720p. Do not stream in 4K. It is not worth it. No one is going to be able to tell the difference. You're going to have to use so much extra internet bandwidth. You're going to buy more expensive cameras. It's not worth it. It's a total waste of your money. 1080p or 720p. When you are done, so you just, you just streamed your, your, your worship service, right? You start your stream about 10 or 15 minutes before. That's why that countdown, we have a countdown that runs. And we run our church announcement slides and things like that, which you're seeing right here at the top of the screen. After it's done, you don't want that kind of unedited video up there. 
trim your video when it's done, but don't delete the original. You don't need to have Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere or any of that stuff. If you're streaming on YouTube, YouTube has the tools where you can just take the beginning and cut it off, take the end and cut it off, and you have a nice, clean, concise video for all your viewers who are going to come and watch you afterwards. So trim your video, but don't delete it. Why don't you delete it? Because you want to keep all the views that are already hit. Because the more views on your video, the more likely it's going to appear in searches. So keep the existing video and just trim it down. Lop off all that stuff before it starts. And if it, it ran over extra, just lop that off too. Consider whether to edit the full service, sermon only version, or both. So what am I talking about? And we're still trying to figure this out. I was always accustomed to going to a church's site, and if you watch them after the live service, you just see the sermon only, right? You see the preacher up there, he starts speaking, it's done speaking, and that's it. They've cut out the rest of the worship service. So one of the things that we try to do was to see what if we had the full worship service there, and what if we had the sermon only version there? And I was surprised to find that we have just as much, if not more, people after the service watch the full worship service rather than just the sermon only. These services are free, so the truth is you don't have to decide. You can have both versions up there and let your audience decide. But you can decide what you want to do. Again, YouTube has its own tools anybody can use. You can go into your existing worship service video. You can say, create a new ver version of this video where it's a sermon only, and it'll save it as a new file under a new playlist. So we have a playlist that says, full worship service, sermons only. And then we have playlists for this series and that series and all this kind of stuff to make it easy for people to find what they're looking for. Full service, sermon only, or both. Right now, we're doing both. We can, and it's easy. YouTube. If you're on YouTube, which I'm going to recommend that you do, which I'll tell you why later, at the end, you want to add a subscribe and a next video end card. You guys ever watch YouTube channels? Always at the end, something pops up, says, subscribe over here, click this link, right? And the next video comes up also. It's just a... It, it, just a little tool that they have. You go in there and you can say, I want that subscribe button here, the next video button there, whatever the case is. Put it up there. Give them opportunities to stay connected. That's what it's all about. Don't shortchange yourself. And then if you have a worship band or a pianist or whatever, put a mic on them because what you hear in the church is not what they'll hear online unless you have them mic'd up. You know, because... Sometimes praise singers can sound great in the church because they're, they're singing to accompaniment, but when that accompaniment isn't online, it doesn't sound all that great. And the praise singers will come and tell you like, hey man, what are y'all doing to me? So mic the band. Put a, put a mic next to the piano, your guitarist or whatever. Easy, way, easy ways to do that. Mic them up. Be intentional about your online audience. They're gonna be able to tell. They're going to know if you're investing and engaging with them or not, or if they're just an afterthought. Engage with them. Be intentional. Camera notes. So what to be aware of with cameras. So you want to have your best camera in the center. Now, I know you're not in the center, Sifa. I'm going to talk to Bellsville about that. You always want to be center-focused with the speaker. You don't want to be coming at them at an angle. I've seen some churches, they have it on the balcony, and, you know, they're coming down on the top of the speaker's head, unless, you know, the speaker's supposed to look up over here, and everyone else is looking at their chin. You know, the number one rule of cinematography is you want to have it eye level and center because you're speaking to the camera. You want to engage with the audience, right? Center, eye level, and you want a head-to-waist shot. It's so frustrating to me when I see these shots that are so wide and you see like the whole stage. Think about it. If I'm watching on my phone, which most people are watching on their phone, how small are you now? They see all this stuff but you. When you talk to somebody, what do you look at? You look at their eyes. If you're speaking to somebody online, they need to be able to see your eyes to connect with you. 
stay waist to head so it gives some room so the camera doesn't have to move all the time every time you know you move a little bit but it stays connected on your eyes you speak directly to the audience because you've engaged with your eyes the second camera can be your side camera. It can be a side angle, giving you a full shot, maybe from head to, you know, head to toes or something like this. A second shot to cut away from, especially if someone happens to be walking in front of your main camera. You need something to cut away from. A third camera can be that wide shot we talked about, maybe showing the entire church. But if your church is mostly empty, don't show them the empty church. Oh, it drives me crazy when our AV team does that. Instead, put that camera and let it face the audience. Even if there's only four or five people together and that camera sees those four or five people, the online audience is like, that church is filled. <laughs> they don't know there's five out of 200. But they're going to oh, that looks cool. I want to come and check it out. And they'll be number six. <laughs> so make that a, a rear shot, a wide shot, or an audience shot. And we talked about lighting earlier. Low light and color, color balance planning. Bellsville has this beautiful spotlight coming on here. Low light is not a problem over here. In most places that you're going to meet, low light is going to be a problem. Even for your eyes looking OK, the camera is going to think it's low. Buy a camera. I have one recommended here that does well in low light. And test it and try it. If the further away the camera is from you, the darker you're going to be. The closer the camera is, the brighter you're going to be. That's just how cameras work. You're going to have to find a camera that works well in the places that you can put it to make you look good. Because if you're too dark, they're going to disengage. And, and here's another thing. If you're like me, if you're a person of color, you need even more lighting. All right, it's so a bottom line fact. You need more lighting. You need a camera that's going to light you all the more. Because as beautiful as we are, the cameras struggle with us sometimes. Oh, and we're beautiful. <laughs> streaming services. I recommend the streaming service that you use is YouTube. Why? Because that is where 95% of the world's video is on. Be where the people are. I, I, I'll be straight up with you. It frustrates me when people go to private services where they can only be seen if you go to their church's website. You can stream on YouTube and link it to your church's website. So all those YouTube stuff, and all, it's on your website. Go to our website. You're going to see every sermon that we've ever done, which is hosted on YouTube, but is also shown on our website. Be where the people are. Give them an opportunity to see you, to share you, to like you, to spread you. Don't hide yourself in a corner by design. So I recommend YouTube. If you can and you like to stream simultaneously, we stream to YouTube and Facebook simultaneously. There's a service called Restream.io. It costs only $19 a month or about $200 a year. And they will allow you to stream to multiple services concurrently. And that can all be set up into your Sling Studio. So you set that up over there one time for the rest of your life. You send the link into your Sling Studio, and that's it. Web, website, create video libraries with links and MP3s. Again, it's multiple touch points, right? You go to our website, you're going to see a library of different playlists, of different series, all these different YouTube videos and sites, but they're all aggregated on our website with MP3s that they can quickly download and listen on audio and podcasts. People are streaming their audios on podcasts. Get your church and your stuff set up on Apple and Google, Apple Podcasts and Google Play. We have our website which sets up our podcasts automatically. So when I post our video to our website, and I, 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 I use actually our YouTube files to extract the audio and put it to our website, it automatically posts to Apple Podcasts and Google Play. I don't have to do anything. Our website takes care of everything for us for free. If you can do it for free and let them do it, why don't we all do that together? Miscellaneous, keep it simple. Make it easy for volunteers. AV is so easy to burn out volunteers. We have this setup because it's simple. Whether to operate, set up, or break down, keep it simple and make it fun. Children can serve. If you make it fun, they will come, they will stay, they will serve.
Be intentional with your online audience. Regularly engage with your online audience. Welcome them. Speak to them during your service. Speak to them at the end of the service. Have a custom intro, a custom outro, a closing. Be intentional with your engagement with that online audience. Promote it. Mark it via social media, emails, newsletters. We send out weekly e-newsletters. We have our information on there. I send a sermon replay on the Sunday or Monday after the service. Hey, you missed our service? Watch us again online. Share this with someone that you want to. So all they have to do is click forward on their email, which is what people do now, and someone else will, oh, okay, let me take a look at that. Rather than copying a link and sending it here, they just forward the email that you're setting them up to share you. Fail. <laughs> that sounds like a weird one, but fail. Try new things with the freedom to fail. Discover new methods of ministry. Make it fun. So there's no, there's no fear of failure here. You're going to succeed because of your failures. We have failed over and we are still failing. And failing is fun when you're not afraid of it. Because you know the success it's going to bring. Amen. You know, by God's grace, we've started to taste some of that success. Here's some of those uh, equipment that I talked about. You may want to take a picture of this. There's also in the handout this digital audio mixer. This is a Soundcraft UI24R. There are other models. I don't recommend any of those. I recommend this. Those small but highly powerful speakers that will fill up more than this hall. C QSC CP8s, they're $400 a pop. Wireless, rack, wireless mic systems, we use Shure BLX, 450. An XLR snake, um, this is if you have your AV system in the back, but you have a lot of your wireless stuff in the front. Somehow the signal is not going. This snake will run all that stuff to the front, so it's just one cable and everything plugs in over here. That's like 300 some dollars. A great rear screen projector, $700 at ViewSonic, and a great rear screen. We have a 120-inch screen. It um, covers up most of our stage. It just, it's, it's huge. It's beautiful. I love it. Um, and we have the projector behind it so no one sees the projector. $200. Make it as seamless as you can. With that being said, questions, even though I have no answers. So you talked about the intro and extras. When you do that and you have the YouTube that's already streamed, does that affect your views if you add those to the previous video? So, so you mean like, okay, so you've streamed it, but now you want to add the intro and you want to add the... Here's what I'm going to tell you, and here's, here's what we're doing. Um, in fact, the intro and the closing that you saw over there, I shot that yesterday just as a sample over here. Ours is actually being done um, and should be released pretty soon. What we're doing to simplify it for our AV team, during our worship service, so here's our worship service. It's, I don't know, we start at 11 o'clock. Let's say we're streaming at 10.50. For five minutes, it's slides that are our church announcements. Then we have a five-minute countdown. Um, it's just animated, inspirational slides that come up, right? Then at that point, you're going to see our church logo with an animated background. It says livingwatersda.org. And then you're going to see our opening video. Even the church will see our opening video so that everything is there. When they need to trim it, they need, don't need to insert or anything. They just need to lop off the beginning and lop off the end to simplify it for your AV team. Otherwise, they need to go in there and insert this and do this and all that kind of stuff. It can be done, but who wants to do that? Instead, your local church audience, yeah, they're going to see the same message, but it takes 10 seconds. They'll get over it. You've got to be intentional about your online audience and how to best reach them. So we're actually incorporating it, and what you see, those intro and the closing, you'll see that over here as well in our church service. Yeah. There are ways around it. It's just the easiest way for our AV team, because I don't want to lose them. They're so valuable, is to incorporate that into that one long stream. Any other questions? Anything that I talked about or anything I didn't talk about? It could be streaming. We talked about, you know, I showed you the, the inspirational media short that uh, we're, we're trying to get ready to launch soon. That's close. I'm really excited about that, and I'm hoping to, to have that ready to show you guys. And, and listen, you know, it, it, it takes a while to make, and it, it costs thousands. But the truth is we're trying to make it so that for a few hundred dollars, we can put your logo, your website, your brand, and give it to you as your tool 
to promote on your networks and your channels to drive people to your churches. You don't have to spend the thousands. You don't have to figure out production. You don't have to do any of that stuff. A few hundred dollars, this is yours. We spend thousands of dollars on marketing and promotion elsewhere. What's a couple hundred dollars with an effective emotional tool like this? And if you want to know any more about this stuff, my contact information, all this stuff will be handed out to you. I know we're short on time, too. I don't even know what the time is or what we're supposed to end or whatever. So I so. think this session is supposed to close. The, new, the next session starts at 2.50. 2.50. Okay, so, so, so we have good. some time or whatever. Any questions? Any concerns? Any trouble? Any hate? <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you because I am not a tech person at all. And I came and I was like, why are you even in here? You know none of this is going to make any sense to you, but it, it totally did. So it, it's, it's simple, and that makes it so that someone who is not a tech guru can actually begin to try to figure it out. So thank you for that. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that. That is the whole purpose, folks. It's to demystify media ministry. This is no longer complicated. It's in the hands of everybody now. We need to get it into your hands now so that you can make a difference using these tools. Real quick, did, did you, I don't know if, because I couldn't be here for the whole thing, did you talk about doing ads on social media and do you have a, a game plan for that type of thing? So I'll, I'll tell you, we, we just got our social media manager. Um, and this actually ties into that inspirational short that I showed you because let's face it, not everyone has a social media manager. We didn't have one for months. We found a political consultant who approached me out of the blue and was like, hey, you need a social media manager? I was like, oh yeah, we do. And so he is designing social media campaigns, online advertising, using, you know, there's awesome tools that you can, you can specifically say, target people on Facebook in this zip code with these demographics. Like, this age, this income, this education, you can slice it so many different ways to target your audience for a few dollars. It's really cheap. But it's rather pointless if you're not actually promoting something worthwhile that they'll actually want to connect with. That's what that small video was about, giving them something to engage, get excited about. What our social media manager is trying to do for us and all of you church planters is designing a process for a social media campaign so that even if you don't have a campaign manager, if you're like me and you're not on social media, I, actually, I hate Facebook and all this stuff. I am not on it. They force my hand on it. I don't get this stuff, honestly. But for someone like me, he will provide a campaign outline so that anybody can institute this to promote whatever they want. So that's what we're designing right now. So it's not just a one-off, but it becomes systematic and shareable to others. So they're all intertwining. I just want to know if I want to have a walk through through the whole system because there is a church in G3. I, I used to help them with their website. And since I moved down here, I'm frequently at Bellsville. No one has been updating the website. I've received email that it's been a month. No one touched the website, so they're going to disable it. So if you look at their video system, it's pretty much nothing. If I can have a better idea. Yeah. I'm a tech guy, but I can train them so they can keep up with what they have. Yeah, well, definitely. Listen. I'm, I put all this stuff up here so that all of you, anyone who's interested, can come over here. You can take a look. You can feel it. You can control it. We can walk through the wiring and everything so that when you leave here, you will have a very clear picture of what you need to do. Hands on. You can do it. Yeah. No Thank question. You. Anything else, anyone? No, if that's it, listen, thank you guys so much. I know it's been a long session. But thank you, thank you, thank you. Listen, you guys have stayed awake far longer than my congregation, so I truly appreciate it. I've never had so many people stay awake so long on me. So thank you guys. God bless you and enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you.